Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This week is Parsha number 23, Piku Day, meaning accounts. We're going to be starting in Exodus chapter 39, verse 1. That is Exodus chapter 39, verse 1. From the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, they made the garments for officiating, for serving in the holy place. And they made the holy garments for Aharon as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He made the ritual vest of gold, of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely woven linen. They hammered the gold into thin plates and cut them into threads in order to work it into the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and the fine linen crafted by a skilled artisan. They made shoulder pieces for it, joined together. They were joined together at the two ends. The decorated belt on the vest used to fasten it was of the same workmanship and materials, gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twined linen, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. They worked the onyx stones mounted in gold settings, engraving them with the names of the sons of Israel as they would be engraved on a seal. Then he put them on the shoulder pieces of the vest to be stones, calling to mind the sons of Israel, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He made the breastplate. It was crafted by a skilled artisan and made to look like the work of the ritual vest of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely woven linen. When folded double, the breastplate was square, doubled. It was a handspan by a handspan. They set in it four rows of stones. The first row was a carnelian, a topaz, and an emerald. The second row, a green feldspar, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, an orange zircon, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were mounted in settings of gold. The stones corresponded to the names of the twelve sons of Israel. They were engraved with their names as a seal would be engraved, each name representing one of the twelve tribes. On the breastplate, they made two pure gold chains twisted like cords. Also, for the breastplate, they made two settings of gold and two gold rings, and they put the two rings at the two ends of the breastplate. They put the two twisted gold chains in the two rings at the end of the breastplate, and attach the other two ends of the twisted chains to the front of the shoulder pieces of the ritual vest. They also made two gold rings and put them on the two ends of the breastplate at its edge on the side facing in toward the west. Also, they made two gold rings and attached them low on the front part of the vest's shoulder pieces near the join, above the vest's decorated belt. Then they bound the breastplate by its rings to the rings of the vest with a blue cord so that it could be on the vest's decorated belt and so that the breastplate would not swing loose from the vest as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He made the robe for the ritual vest. It was woven entirely of blue with its opening in the middle like that of a coat of mail and with a border around the opening so that it wouldn't tear. On the bottom hem, they made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet, and woven linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates all the way around the hem of the robe, between the pomegranates. That is, bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, all the way around the hem of the robe for service, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. They made tunics of finely woven linen for Aharon and his sons, the turban of fine linen, the splendid headgear of fine linen, the linen shorts, and the sash of finely woven linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, the work of a weaver in colors, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. They made the ornament for the holy turban of pure gold, wrote on it the words, set apart for Adonai, like the engraving on a seal, and tied a blue cord on it to fasten it to the front of the turban, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Thus all the work for the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, was finished, with the people of Israel doing everything exactly as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moshe, the tent and all its furnishings, 
clasps, planks, crossbars, posts, and sockets, the covering of tanned ramskins, the covering of fine leather, and the curtain for the screen, the ark for the testimony, its poles, and the ark cover, the table, all its utensils, and the showbread, the pure menorah, its lamps, and their arrangement for display, its accessories and the oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the screen for the entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with its bronze grate, poles, and all its utensils, the basin with its base, the tapestries for the courtyard with their posts and sockets, the screen for the entrance to the courtyard with its ropes and tent pegs, all the utensils for the service in the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the garments for officiating, for serving in the holy place, the garments for Aharon the Kohen, and the garments for his sons to serve in the office of Kohen. The people of Israel did all the work just as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Moshe saw all the work, and there it was. They had done it. Exactly as Adonai had ordered, they had done it. And Moshe blessed them. Adonai said to Moshe, On the first day of the first month you are to set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Put in it the ark for the testimony, and conceal the ark with the curtain. Bring in the table and arrange its display. Bring in the menorah and light its lamps. Set the gold altar for the incense in front of the ark for the testimony, and set up the screen at the entrance to the tabernacle. Place the altar for burnt offerings in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. Set up the courtyard all the way around, and hang up the screen for the entrance to the courtyard. Take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it with all its furnishings, then it will be holy. Anoint the altar for burnt offerings with all its utensils. Consecrate the altar, then the altar will be especially holy. Anoint the basin and its base and consecrate it. Then bring Aharon and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Put the holy garments on Aharon, anoint him and consecrate him so that he can serve me in the office of Cohen. Bring his sons, put tunics on them and anoint them as you anointed their father so that they can serve me in the office of Cohen. Their anointing will signify that the office of Cohen is theirs through all their generations. Moshe did this. He acted in accordance with everything Adonai had ordered him to do. On the first day of the first month of the second year, the tabernacle was set up. Moshe erected the tabernacle, put its sockets in place, put up its planks, put in its crossbars, and set up its posts. He spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above it, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He took and put the testimony inside the ark, put the poles on the ark, and set the ark cover above on the ark. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle, set up the curtain as a screen, and concealed the ark for the testimony, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He put the table in the tent of meeting on the side of the tabernacle facing north, outside the curtain. He arranged a row of bread on it before Adonai, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He put the menorah in the tent of meeting across from the table, on the side of the tabernacle facing south. Then he lit the lamps before Adonai, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He set the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the curtain, and burned on it incense made from aromatic spices, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He set up the screen at the entrance to the tabernacle. The altar for burnt offerings he placed at the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered on it burnt offering and the grain offering, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing, so that Moshe and Aharon and his sons could wash their hands and feet there, so that they could wash when entering the tent of meeting and when approaching the altar, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Finally, he erected the courtyard around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the screen for the entrance to the courtyard. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of Adonai filled the tabernacle. Moshe was unable to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud remained on it and the glory of Adonai filled the tabernacle. 
Whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel continued with all their travels. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not travel onward until the day when it was taken up. For the cloud of Adonai was above the tabernacle during the day, and fire was in it at night, so that all the house of Israel could see it throughout all their travels. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word. I won't be before you long because my stomach is growling. So I'm hungry. How many believe I'll cut it short to eat? I wouldn't do that. Oh, hallelujah. What I love about reading Torah is that I see the foundation and the beginnings of things. And we kept hearing throughout the reading as Adonai has instructed. Is that right? He left no room to go this way or this way as he had instructed. Then when they finished, Moses inspected again to make sure that it was built to the specifications that he had instructed. Correct? Is there anything different today? Now you're all looking at me like deer in the head, like what? What do you mean is there anything different? As Adonai had instructed. Chapter 40, because last, last week we were talking about the tabernacle and the tent of meeting and everything and how it was all formulated and it was pretty awesome. And we understand that we are the temples, right? Today. So Adonai said to Moshe, on the first day of the first month, you are to set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. taking the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Correct? What is the anointing? You're consecrating, correct? Setting apart these vessels for a specific what? Purpose and use, right? Okay. Just laying a foundation. Not going to trick you. Verse 12, then bring Aharon and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting. Wash them with water. What is washing? Mikvah, which is what? Baptism, cleansing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Wash them with water. Put the holy garments on Aharon and anoint him, consecrate him, so that he can serve me in the office of what? Priest of Cohen. Yes? yes? So he had to be washed, and he was anointed. When they anointed you in the day, they didn't just go. They poured oil over you, right? It was smeared on you, and then you begin to listen. Shine. Where do we hear that? Let your light so stop it. Can't be the same thing. We can't we can't be right. It's got to be different because this is a different word, right? Can't be the same word. You can't be speaking from the volume of the book, right? When I read about these priestly garments and how intricate he put things together and how this Aharon, his sons, were called for a specific purpose. I think about, <laughs> first of all, the, the whole armor in Ephesians 6 and that breastplate, breast, breastplate of righteousness, right? So the breastplate was that of righteousness. And then I have to smile because I thought about David and Saul, 
Because when they faced the mighty giant Goliath, what did they try to do? They tried to put Saul's armor on and it didn't. <laughs> awesome. Listen to what the Spirit says. Each one of you, just like in this temple, this tent of meeting being built, right? Just like the breastplate in every vessel had to be made for to a, a certain specification, each one of you that have submitted and surrendered to the Father is a designer's original. Each of you have a purpose and have been anointed to do a certain thing in this earth that no one else can do. You got to believe that. If you don't, start today. Yes? You can't do everything I can do. You can't touch everybody that I can touch, and neither can I do the same thing for you. I can't do everything you do or touch everybody that you can touch. Sometimes it's only for you. And I'm speaking from experience. There's been times where I've been on the street ministering to people. I'm with three or four folks and we'll come up to some, some people and, you know, they want to push me to the front all the time. And somehow I'll slide to the back and I'll get quiet. You know why? Because I'm supposed to be quiet because that person is supposed to minister to them, not me. Yes? When we look out into a field or into a forest, we see he shows us this in nature. If you see a well-groomed and well-groomed lawn and you'll look at it and you'll go, man, that's a nice looking yard. And the grass could be Bahia, could be St. Augustine or something else, right? But the yard is well-groomed. And you'll look and all of the grass looks the same. But if you look at every blade of grass, there's a slight difference to each and every one of them. But together, are you seeing where this is flowing? But together, one God, one Father, who is above us all, who is in us all, one Spirit, one Savior. Hello? There's one head, not many. There's not even little heads. One head. Yes? Okay. Help me, Holy Spirit. All right. <laughs> so Aaron was called to be the priest and to move in the... I'm going to read to you from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. I got it written down, so I'm going to read... But you are a chosen people, a king's kohanim, a holy nation, a people for God to possess. A people for God to possess. Why? In order for you to declare the praises of the one who calls you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Before you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Verse 11, dear friends. I urge you as aliens and temporary residents not to give in to the desires of the old nature which keep warring against you. Let me read that first part of that again. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and temporary residents, you are temporary residents. This is not your home, so don't get comfortable. Hello? This is not the end game. Don't get comfortable. <laughs> Gosh. Thank you, Father. Verse 12. But you live such good lives among the pagans that even though they now speak against you as evildoers, they will, as a result of seeing your good actions, give glory to God on the day of his coming. Is that the purpose and the call on all of our lives? Yes. I'm almost done already. Yay. <laughs> 
I'll just, I'll share this with you. What's been uh, burning on my heart and what's been breaking my heart is the separation of the body. And us thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. And we've talked a lot about it, at least I have anyway, about the fear of the Lord or the reverence for Him. About putting Him first in all things. In all of the spiritual warfare that we've talked on and talked about and whatnot, my job has been to equip you to do your part. Yes? And where's your part at? It's where you are, isn't it? It's where you live. It's where you work. That's where you get challenged, isn't it? It's in your family. Yes? I'm the only one, right? Okay. Y'all can go back to being quiet next week. I need you to answer me today. <laughs> ah. I am disturbed because when I read Torah and I read the scripture, I see that we're repeating the same mistakes that our forefathers made. But we are expecting a different result. But every time we see it in Scripture, it's always the same result, isn't it? So I don't look outside of the body anymore for all of the hell that I see going on. I have been anointed and set apart. Say that with me. I haven't been anointed and set apart for the service of my Father. And from this day forward, I will serve him to the fullness of my ability. For today is the first day of the rest of my life. In Yeshua's name. Now you put it out there and it's going to be tested. Every time you started to walk and to do the work of the Father, you get tested. I'm coming to a point here to close out because I'm going to show something to you. And it's something that I really, really cry about because I've seen it before and I want everybody that I know to see and experience it. These people up until this point, they saw the miracle and the hand of the Father move, did they not? The mighty works that brought them out. I've heard scientists and stuff just try to explain <laughs> how everything happened, how the possibility of it all could happen, but they can't. They only confirm that it was real. Because it was. Did the Holy Father move into another realm to help his people? He moved a sea, did he not? And they walked across on dry land. Now think about this. That water is always there. Y'all been to the beach or to a lake, right? You walk out into that beach or that lake, your feet goes down into it because what? It's holding water. Think about a wagon or wagons going through all that or animals. Scripture says it go, they went through as if it was dry. What? Amazing. So here they are. They're remembering and doing things according to the will of the Father.
chapter 40, verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting and the glory of Adonai filled the tabernacle. Moshe was unable to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud remained on it and the glory, the Shekinah, the weightiness of his presence of Adonai filled the tabernacle. And whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel continued with all their travels. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not travel onward until the day when it was taken up. For the cloud of Adonai was above the tabernacle during the day, and the fire was in the cloud at night, and so that all the house of Israel could see throughout their travels. How many could see? All could see. Today, how many see? Second Chronicles 7, 1. When Shlomo had finished praying, fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of Adonai filled the house. And that the Kohenim could not enter the house of Adonai because the glory of Adonai filled Adonai's house. And all the people of Israel, all the people of Israel saw... When the fire came down and the glory of Adonai was on the house and they bowed down with their faces to the ground, to the floor and prostrating themselves, they gave thanks to Adonai for he is good and his grace continues forever. Revelation 15, 8, then the sanctuary was filled with the smoke from the Shekinah that is from his power and no one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels had been accomplished. Revelation 21, 23. And the city has no need for the sun and the moon to shine on it because of Adonai Shekinah gives it light and its lamp is the lamp. So I'm going to tell you what he told me. I'm going to show you what he showed me and then I'm going to pray and sit down. The move of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural <laughs> was not for the modern day church. That's not when it started. You have just read it in Torah, how he moved. Yes? In the beginning, God said, let there be. And then there was. But we know that the sun and the moon were not created until the fourth day. If you want to find a verification of what that was, then go to Revelation because, again, it was not the sun. It was the light. It was his glory. It was the word that was spoken that became light. Hallelujah. OK, so as it was in the beginning, it says he separated the light from the darkness. Did it not? I read to you the scripture where he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous. OK, not talking about the sun. But the light and the glory of his presence, of his presence, of his presence, of his Holy Spirit, of his son. Yes. OK, so he is the high priest, right? You sure? Yes. He's the high priest. He's the only mediator between us and. It has always been so. And it always will be so. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. You've seen how he moved when the people now, this was the criteria. They humbled themselves before the Father and they did everything exactly the way that he designed it. And then they gathered together for what? Fellowship with one another? After Shavuot or Pentecost, a church, the beginning of what we call the church, started. And if you go back and read Acts, they met in the open air, didn't they? And what did they come for? They're waiting. Everybody had all things in common, and then he manifested himself. He showed up. Listen, I have been... I'm going to share this with you and then I'm going to be quiet because I, I want you to know him 
on a deep level that he wants you to know him. Don't have to follow my example. Ask. For two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And he revealed to me that means when two or more are gathered together in my name, in my character, and in my authority, I manifest my glory. Just like he did as we read. Just like he has done. I was a part of a fellowship one time, and and uh, I will never forget it. Talked to the praise and worship team, and I said to them, I said, remember what you're called to do, and that's to lead people into his presence. But he can't, they can't get there unless you get there. And so they prayed. And then they begin to sing and to do praise and worship. The Shekinah came into the place. It was amazing. Nobody could stand. Everybody was laying down. It wasn't like you see today in a lot of places, people flipping all over the floor and doing all of that. that that's, I, then it happened again. The next week. Then it happened again the next week. Hour, two hours. But in the presence of God, there's no time. You won't look at your watch once. You won't even feel because <laughs> every atom and molecule of your body is responding to the presence of the Shekinah glory of the Father. Then the next week we met, the pastor gave up and gave an announcement and said we would do praise and worship after he brought the word. So, I will say this to you, you who are consecrated and set apart. There's nothing more important than him and his presence in your life. And if you don't tangibly feel it, get on your face or on your knees and seek him. Because that's his will concerning you, that you know him. This man put himself before the Spirit because he had to preach. I'd rather not say a word if he's going to be glorified. And people came up to me after that last one and Lester, so they were crying. Why? <laughs> Why are you asking me? You know the answer. This is what I won't do, and this is what I encourage you never to do. Put yourself, anything or anyone, before your Father. When you honor Him that way, He will honor you with His presence in a tangible way. I'm just giving you a starting place. Whether you receive or you don't receive, I've spoken what he's given me to speak to you. We saw the evidence of it. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Be afraid of not experiencing him and not being touched by him. That's where your hunger comes from. That's where your heart can be broken comes from. Yeah. Let's repeat this prayer after me and I'll be done. Oh, oh Lord Abba, you are my shepherd. Therefore, I shall not want. For you have supplied all my needs according to your riches and your glory 
in Messiah Yeshua. You lead me beside still waters, beside green pastures. It is you who restores my soul. All of these things you do for your namesake, that my life, my voice will give you glory. And when I walk through what appears to be the valley of the shadow of death, when I go through trials and tribulations, I will fear no evil. For I know this, you are with me. Your rod and your staff you bring me comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I can sit across from him, behold him, and yet I am in peace. You have anointed my head with oil. You have set me apart for your service. And because I am anointed, I minister from a cup that overflows. And surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. For my name is written in your Lamb's book. I am yours. You are mine forever and ever. Amen. All right. That's all I got. If you guys need prayer, we'll be here to pray for you, okay? For more teaching and information, visit us online today. Come and be a part of our fellowship. Here at The Seed, enjoy worshiping and learning God's Word with us.